Well, hello. I'm Melissa with Sentimental Salvage and Design and thank you for joining me for another tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use the brand new Iron Orchid Design paint inlays. These are a new product. Uh, there's nothing else like these out there. They're not a transfer. They're not a stamp. They're completely new. So we're going to get going on those. It's going to be a lot of fun. In this application, we're going to be using DIY paint. The paint inlays were formulated for use with a chalk style paint. So DIY paint being clay based chalk paint is the perfect medium to use with these inlays. So I'm just going to go ahead here and apply my first coat. Once your first coat is applied, you can go ahead and just let that dry naturally or you can do like I do and I use a heat tool to speed it up. Once your first coat is dry, you can go ahead and start planning out how you're going to apply your inlays. As you can see here, I have the inlay actually the wrong way because this is the paint side up. You want to plan it out with the paint side down because that's how it's going to apply to your project. So in a little bit, you will see that I realize I have it upside down and I flip it over. Lucky for me, my little bit of planning and cutting here isn't a disaster. And here I realized that it was upside down. So when you're planning out your project, always make sure that you're looking at the underside of your paint inlay. You're actually looking at the grid lines. The backing paper on these paint inlays has a grid line pattern on it so that you can easily cut out straight lines if you have to apply it to say drawers or dresser fronts or anything that has a straight edge, you can easily cut it out. 
Also for this tutorial, I am just using bits and pieces of the rose chintz paint inlay. You can use a whole sheet or you can use multiple sheets. They do connect together. It's up to you in the project that you're, you're trying to finish. Once I have my layout planned, I just take my finger and I score the edge so that it's easy for me when I'm ready to apply the inlay that I know exactly where I wanted it to go. Okay, once you have it all planned out, you're ready for your second coat of paint. For my second coat, and because I'm using DIY paint, which is very thick, I'm just gonna give it a little spritz of water to thin the paint a little bit so it's easier to apply. Thinning DIY paint will also give you a smoother application if you don't want so much texture. You want your second coat, the coat that the inlay will actually set into, you want it to be fairly, I wouldn't say heavy, but you want it to have some substance. So there's something there for the inlay to adhere to. If this coat isn't heavy enough, you may have dry spots and then your inlay won't adhere properly. I work pretty quickly at this stage. DIY paint does dry fairly fast, so you wanna move quickly, which is why it's also a good idea to score those pieces if you have that opportunity because you don't have to play around with getting your placement right. Once your inlays are down into the paint, I just like to make sure that it's like sitting in the paint. So I rub over it with my finger. You just wanna make sure that those inlays are getting right into that wet paint. A little tip to rub those inlays down is to use a little balled up piece of saran wrap or cling wrap or plastic wrap. I just ball it up and it helps you be able to push down on that backing paper without the friction of your, your fingers. Sometimes if you rub too hard, you can tear the paper, so you don't want that to happen. And the saran wrap helps keep that from happening. To get that all pressed down, I gently mist it with a mister bottle. This step starts the activation process of the paint inlay itself. Once I've misted it, I also take a wet cloth, wet as in more than damp, but not dripping wet. And I use this cloth to help press that inlay down into that paint. All you wanna do at this stage is to dab the cloth up and down. You don't wanna rub it side to side. Notice in the top left corner how the paint inlay looks frosty. That means it's still too dry. So you wanna make sure you saturate that so that it has the bold, vibrant color. Remember that this stage is what releases your inlay into the paint and away from the backing paper. So it's very important to make sure that you're getting it saturated with water. And now again, you're just gonna to wanna to let that dry. 
and you can do that naturally or you can use a heat tool like I normally do just to speed up the process. You'll want to make sure that your piece is completely dry. You want that inlay paint to be embedded into the paint of your project. The next step is to dampen the backing paper. What this does is it releases the backing paper from the paint inlay itself and leaves the inlay on your project. So you want to make sure you get it damp and then you let it just sit for about 15 to 30 seconds you don't want it to sit so long that it starts to dry again because then you won't be able to peel that backing paper off properly. You just want to dampen it so that the backing paper releases from the inlay. So you can peel your backing paper off and leave that inlay behind. Once I feel like the backing paper has been dampened enough to be able to release, I slowly start peeling it back. And you can see how nicely this comes off and it leaves a really nice image behind on your project. You can see here just on the left side, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the backing paper off and it's because I didn't dampen it enough. That's why the backing paper isn't releasing properly. It's releasing from the inlay, but it's not releasing from the paint, the background paint. I do get it off okay, but it wasn't quite as easy as you'd like it to be. So that's the application of the inlay. Now you want it to dry completely so you can seal it. Once it's completely dry, you want to seal it with Big Top. Big Top is DIY Paints brush on top coat. I have some already poured out into this tiny little container, so I'm going to use that. You have to be very careful not to smear your paint inlay. So your first coat of Big Top, you're just going to swipe on. I just call it the swipe on coat. Nothing fancy, just get that inlay covered. Don't brush too much or you will smear it. Once you're all done with that swipe on coat, you're just going to let it dry completely. Once you're positive it's completely dry, sometimes I like to go over it with a 220 grit sanding block. This just helps to take down any texture that may have been applied with the swipe coat or even just in the paint. A quick dusting with a soft cloth and you're ready for coat number two of Big Top. You can take your time applying this coat to give yourself a smoother finish because you've given yourself that buffer with the swipe coat already so you won't be smearing your inlay. And there you go. You've successfully applied an IOD paint inlay. 
Let's set this aside and work on the other part of the project. The secret ingredient in this part of the project is Glad Press and Seal. We're going to use a little piece of this to hold these little letters in place so that they're easier to paint. And we won't get a bunch of paint on our fingers. You'll notice if you bought a kit for this project that some of your letters might have a little bit of resin remnants on the edges. I just scrape along with my fingernail and peel that off. With your press and seal laying sticky side up on your table, lay your letters into that so it holds them in place while you're painting them. In your kit, you received two tiny little paint containers. The one that's full is the one you want to use as your color for the letters. had some difficulties with this O not wanting to stick, but my brush was a little bit too stiff, I think, and it just gave me some grief. Once the paint on your letters has dried, you want to accent them with the little bit of metallic that you got in your kit. For this video, I'm using Fusion's Pale Gold Metallic Paint. I always just do this with my finger. I find I have more control. And I just dip my finger in it and wipe most of it off and then just lightly brush it over the letter. These letters were made using Iron Orchid Designs Victoria mold. So they have a really nice detail on them and it just gives that gold highlight something to really stick to. Okay, so now we are going to apply the letters to our project. Just make sure that they're dry before you start doing your placements. And then just figure out how you want them to sit on your project. Once you've planned out your placement, then you're ready to glue them on. This is the glue that I use. It's the glue that I use for almost everything and I'm, I'm happy with the results I get. I put it in one of these little dollar store squeeze tubes to make it a little bit easier to deal with. I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit here on the table and I'm going to apply it to the back of the letters using a small brush.
Once you've got them all glued on there, you're just gonna wanna let that dry really well. Trying to get that little rope through the holes was a little bit of a challenge, so I just wrapped some scotch tape around the end and then it was easier to just kind of shove it through the hole. And there you have it. If this was your first time using an Iron Orchid Designs paint inlay, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I think these paint inlays are gonna open up a whole new world of creativity for us. I'm excited to see what you create. If you're interested in any of the Iron Orchid Designs products, DIY paint products, or fusion mineral paint products, they're all available on my website at sentimentalsalvage.ca. Also, if you're interested in creating this cute little sign, the take home kit is available on my website as well. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I really hope it gave you the courage to try a project of your own.